Okay, grade nines. So today we're going to be talking about how to write the equation of a line in slope y-intercept form, otherwise known as y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b is not new to you. Um, in the previous unit, this would be often described as the partial variation equation template. Uh, this is how partial variation equations would look, where m would be described as the rate of change or the slope, and b would be described as the vertical intercept or the initial value or starting amount. Uh, as we head into this new unit on linear equations, we change the terminology a little bit. So m we know is the slope, b, we will be calling that the y-intercept. And it's going to be called the y-intercept because when you think about a graph, the vertical axis is often the y-axis. So calling something the y-intercept, we're simply referring to where a line or line segment crosses or touches the y-axis. And today we're going to be uh, examining different ways to write the equation uh, of a line in, in slope y-intercept form uh, given some different conditions. So let's just get started here on this first example. So it says here, identify the slope and the y-intercept of each linear relation. Use these values to write the equation of the line. And our first example is showing here, and it's this graph, and it's got a line, a linear relation that is showing, and you can see some, some ordered pairs have been, I guess, picked out or clearly identified with these black dots. And so you'll notice in this question, we're basically given um, the task of doing three things. We're trying to identify or figure out the slope, the y-intercept, and then finally use these to write the equation. Yellow and blue make green, okay? And so let's go ahead and get started on the yellow part of this question, which I'm just gonna block off some yellow space here. Uh, for us to do some work. I'm also going to block off a little bit of blue space over here. And then finally, I'm going to block off some green space down here at the bottom where we're going to write the equation. Okay, so here we go. All right, so we have this graph and we're trying to figure out the slope of this linear relation. Well, slope shouldn't be that hard for us to do. We have a lot of practice now determining slope under different conditions. And when you're given a graph with some nice easy dots, um, as far as I'm concerned, nothing beats rise over run. So m equals rise over run. Now, how do we use this? All we got to do is go to the graph and find a couple of dots that we are very confident in and use uh, those dots to figure out the rise and the run. So as I look at this graph, I've got four different dots that are very clear and easy to see. I'm going to go ahead and pick this dot right here and this dot right here. Um, it doesn't really matter what two dots I pick. Um, this is a fine choice. So if you don't like this choice, you could certainly make a different choice if that uh, suited you better. And then I'm going to figure out the, how much rise and how much run exists with these two dots. So I'm just going to go back and do some quick counting here. So as I look at my scale, I'll notice that the, um, the scale for the vertical axis and for the horizontal axis are both counting by ones. And that's great because that makes it a lot easier to count rise and run. So uh, let's see here. So the rise is one, two, three, four. And the run is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna take those values, the four and the six, and input them in here. So the rise is four, the run is six. And I always want to um, write my slope in simplest form. So two thirds is uh, in simplest form. Some people will want to change this to a decimal and it's not like illegal to do that, but it really doesn't make sense to do so here because when you look at two over three, notice it still looks like rise over run. Once we change something to a decimal, we kind of lose that rise over run sort of uh, relationship or idea. So it's usually common to leave slopes in fraction form where possible. 
Um, that may be a little uncomfortable to you because you maybe love decimals and maybe are not a big fan of fractions, but uh, this is definitely a situation where you want to keep it in fraction form. Moving on to the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept, as we have already seen uh, in the previous unit, is just as simple as looking at a graph, if we have one, and finding where the um, line or line segment crosses or touches that vertical axis, the y-axis. And so it looks like it's crossing at negative 5. And so there's no real fancy math here, but hey, b is negative 5. And so when it now comes time to writing the equation of the line, all we do is take the slope and the y-intercept and write them in slope y-intercept form. And in slope y-intercept form, it would be y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. That's the equation for this line in slope y-intercept form. And this first example is done. So in this next example, we're being given the same task. We're trying to write the equation of the line in slope y-intercept form, but you'll notice that this question looks really different than the first one. We don't have a graph. All we're given are these two ordered pairs, and we're asked to um, write the equation of the line. But first, we need to figure out the slope of the line and the y-intercept of the line. So it says a linear relation that passes through the points 3, 7, and negative 1, 15. So when you're just given two ordered pairs, certainly one thing you could do if you're a very visual learner is to get out a piece of grid paper, plot these ordered pairs so you can see them on a grid, make a line segment that joins the two ordered pairs together, and use rise and run. And there's nothing wrong with that method. Um, as long as the dots that you are given are easy dots. And, you know, even as I look at the order pair negative 1, 15, notice that that 15 is a big number. You need a big piece of grid paper or perhaps need to change your scale. And as soon as you have to start doing that with a graph, the graph starts to lose its, um, I guess, uh, efficiency in terms of, of that being a good way uh, to figure out slope. Another way to figure out slope that you learned about, and some of you were very good at showing me in the previous unit, was the subtraction method. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is what's often called the subtraction method or the two-point method for determining slope. And what it requires us to do is to look at the two order pairs that we have and to Take the y coordinate, remember these are the y's, this one and this one, um, the y coordinates from each order pair and subtract them from each other. Now, before we jump into that, we do have to make a decision and we have to decide which of these order pairs we're going to call ordered pair number two and which order pair we're going to call number one. And without any real uh, deep analysis here, we'll go ahead and call this order pair number two and we'll call this ordered pair here, ordered pair number one. So y2 is 15 minus, because you're always finding the difference between the y coordinates. And that's simply because um, the difference in the y coordinates is the same as rise. So 15 minus seven will, will allow us to figure out how much rise there is between these two ordered pairs. In a similar way, we're going to do negative one minus three to figure out how much run exists between these two order pairs. Now we're gonna evaluate what we have here. 15 minus seven is eight. This is negative four. And we're gonna make sure we put this in simplest form. Negative two over one is okay. Negative two is even better. The slope of this linear relation that passes through these two order pairs is negative two. So at this point, um, if you're liking the subtraction method, the subtraction method is really great because it's very universal. Um, the subtraction method can totally work. Let me back up here. The subtraction method could totally work when you have a graph, but um, rise over run does work really nice. Um, subtraction method works really great when you have a table and you know there's just a lot of different ways that the subtraction method or the two point method is a great way of figuring out slope. The one risk is you have to be good at bed mass and you have to be good at substitution. 
so that all this works out correctly. On to the y-intercept now. So this one is even trickier because in our previous example, the y-intercept was figured out just by looking at the graph. Well, if we don't have a graph, how can we possibly know the y-intercept? So this is where I'm going to introduce to you um, a couple different strategies that could be used to figure out the y-intercept that don't involve a graph. The first way I'm going to show you is to um, solve an equation. So y equals mx plus b. As much as we recognize that as being slope y-intercept form, this is also a formula. A formula where if we can replace three out of the four um, values that are in this formula, we can solve for or figure out the missing value. And as we look at this question, here's what we know so far. We know that the slope is negative two. We just figured that out. X and Y, we also know these as well. And you might be asking yourself, well, how do we know what X and Y are? These two ordered pairs that are given to us um, remember that these are XY ordered pairs. We can choose either of these two ordered pairs and replace X and Y in our formula here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the first ordered pair and replace X and Y. Notice that I now have an equation where I am going to solve for B. And this is perfect because well, B is the y-intercept, and this is exactly what we're trying to accomplish in this blue space here, is what is the y-intercept of this linear relation? So in solving this equation, we will first do some simplifying on the right-hand side. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Uh, I'm going to now add 6 to both sides. All right. Hopefully this takes you back and makes you think about balance method for solving equations. And we find out that B is 13. In other words, the y-intercept is 13. And so what's the equation? Y equals negative 2x plus 13. Now notice that this is a very mathematical approach to finding the equation of a line. The subtraction method for finding slope is very you know, numbers-based. And so is the method that we've used here for figuring out the y-intercept. It's also very math-based. We have to solve an equation. Um, if you're a visual learner, it's hard to look at these numbers and make some sense out of them. So don't forget this. You could totally, if you wanted to, with this question, even after you do this work, you could certainly check things by using a Cartesian grid and plotting the ordered pairs and seeing if your answers make sense. Even just seeing these two order pairs on a grid can give you some sense as to whether or not your answers are even realistic. So let me plot these two order pairs, three and seven. So I'm just gonna pretend that this grid, I'm just counting by one. So there's three, seven, negative one, 15. Okay, let me count carefully here. Two, well, I can go up to seven, um, nine, 11, I mean, without even getting too crazy about where I plot this dot, if I look at the line segment that joins these two dots together, I notice right away my slope will be negative, which totally lines up with the slope being negative 2. And I can tell that my y-intercept is positive, and it's a pretty big positive number, uh, which totally makes sense with the 13 that we figured out. So even just a rough picture on a grid can help us verify whether or not our values for slope and y-intercept are even realistic, okay? So, we've covered off now two different examples where we are uh, given a graph and we figure out the slope and y-intercept. Then we have this example where we were just given two ordered pairs. We're gonna move on to an example like this now where um, we're now going to switch into graphing lines that are in slope y-intercept form. And graphing uh, sometimes can take a lot of time because you've got to figure out order pairs and, and stuff for um, a linear equation. Um, we're going to find out that there's a really neat, efficient way to graph lines when they're in slope y-intercept form. And so here we go. So notice in this question here, it says the slope and y-intercept are given. 
and then all we got to do is write the equation and then graph the line. So this is pretty great. So reflecting back on my colors, like, whoops, I wanted that to be yellow. Let's try again. Like, there's the slope. We didn't ha we didn't even have to figure it out. And there's the y-intercept. Arr, that's supposed to be blue. Let's try again. And again, look at that. So all the work we were doing in the previous questions, they're already giving us that information. We just need to now write the equation, and that should be easy to do. Um, well, if the slope is 3 fourths and the y-intercept is negative 2, here's the equation. y equals 3 fourths x minus 2. Now, to graph this line in a very efficient way, I don't have to get out a calculator or a piece of paper or nothing. If I know that this is slope y-intercept form, here's how I think about this. I look at the equation and I look at the y-intercept and the y-intercept is negative 2. And because the y-intercept is negative 2, I know that that is a dot that I can quickly plot on a Cartesian grid. So there's one of the dots that make up my line right there. Then to make more dots, I can use the slope. And remember that slope is rise over run. And from this y-intercept, I can go up three and to the right four, and I can make another dot. And I can continue that pattern of going up three and over four and make as many dots as the grid will allow me to place. Let's face it, the more dots I put on this grid, the more, I guess, uh, precise of a line that I'm going to end up graphing. Now, I was able to make three total dots there. I also want to make a dot over somewhere in the you know lower quadrant here. And to do that, as much as I can go up three into the right four to get dots, I can also go down three into the left four. And notice that I have another dot that totally belongs to this line. You can even like visually tell that it's lining up perfectly. And so keep that in mind that, um, you know, you can basically do the opposite and get more dots. There is the linear relation y equals 3 fourths x minus 2. That was pretty easy to graph. I didn't have to get out a calculator or make a table or nothing. Let's try another one of those. So same situation, we're given the slope and y-intercept and we need to figure out the equation. So if the slope is negative three and the y-intercept is zero, then, pardon me, I need to get back to my pen here, there we go. Then the equation would be y equals negative three x and I guess putting plus zero is what I should do, but when you think about it, wait a second, I don't have to put that plus zero. That doesn't need to be in the equation. This equation right here is all I really need to write. Notice that this equation is in slope y-intercept form, but because the y-intercept is zero, there's no requirement to write it. Now, how does that look graphically? Well, here it is. There's the y-intercept of zero, and then I can use the slope, and the slope is negative three, to make more dots. Now that also leads to another bit of a confusion. You know, and, and so here we go. Negative three, the whole number, is actually a little confusing to deal with. We almost wish the slope was a fraction. I know, think about that. We have a whole number, but we wish it was a fraction. How strange. Well, of course, you can turn any whole number into a fraction by just putting it over one. And this will now ha help us figure out that we should go down three and to the right one to make another dot. And we can continue that pattern of going down three into the right one, down three into the right one, and we can make a whole bunch of dots. In a similar way, we can go up three into the left one, and I can make a whole bunch of dots on this grid plenty of dots that help me make a nice precise looking line. There we go. And there it is. There's y equals negative 3x. Now, looking back at the equation, you might notice that that was a direct variation equation. That's what we would have called it last unit. And look at that line on the grid. It is a direct variation. So there's a total connection there that 
Um, yes, this equation is in slope y-intercept form, but we would describe this as being a direct variation equation. All right, let's move on to this one now. So the slope is negative one-half, and uh, the y-intercept is five. So the equation would be y equals negative one-half x plus five, and when I go to graph that, I will simply plot the y-intercept, which is positive five. There we go. And, ooh, the slope is negative one-half, you know, with the negative, like, halfway there. And, and a lot of times that causes confusion for students. You know, the fraction negative one-half like this, when thinking about direction on the grid, some students don't know whether they should be going up or down, left or right. Well, this is where it sometimes can be beneficial to just take a step back for a moment and ask yourself, hmm, if a slope is negative, like negative one half, think about what the direction should look like. Lines with negative slopes should be going down as you move from left to right on the grid. So as you go from left to right, the line should be decreasing or going down. And so with that in mind, you realize that when you go back to your graph here, whether you think about this as going down one and to the right two, or if you think about this as going up one and to the left two, both of them would be considered correct because they are making dots that are gonna allow this line to have a negative slope, a slope that decreases as you go from left to right on this grid. So I'm just gonna get a couple more dots on here. I've got plenty of dots. Now I can make my line and I can make it nice and precisely. Uh-oh, hang on, Control-Z. Let's try that again. I was trying to use my line tool. There we go, okay. And there's the line, y equals negative 1 half x plus five. And just real quickly looking at this uh, fraction, this is when you realize that, oh, when a fraction is written like this, you could write, rewrite the fraction so that the negative definitely goes with the numerator and only the numerator, or it could go with the denominator and only the denominator. So all three of these fractions are considered equivalent or the same. And actually the grid shows you that they're all the same. Okay, last example from this group, which is a slope of zero and a y-intercept of six. So writing the equation, we will end up with the equation of y equals zero x plus six. Now, if you're thinking that, wait a sec, I don't know if that equation is written as simply as it could be. It's not. This could be more simply written as just the equation y equals six. Now, that doesn't really look much like a slope y-intercept form equation, but it is. That is trying to communicate that this is a line with a y-intercept of six and a slope of zero. Now, what does a slope of zero look like? Um, well, let's go look at the grid here. So first off, the y-intercept. We plot that at positive six. Now, a slope of zero, okay, if you think about what does that look like, it will be helpful to think about it as a fraction. Well, zero, you can rewrite as a fraction by putting zero over like any number you want. Uh, that'll still make zero. So I'm just going to put zero over three. Zero over three is the same as zero. Now, in terms of rise and run, what that means is from this dot, I'm gonna rise zero and run three. Rise zero and run three. And you can see what I'm making here is a horizontal line. I can also go to the left and say that zero over negative three is also the same as zero, which allows me to rise zero and run negative three. And I'll do that a few times. And yeah, horizontal lines have a slope of zero. And this can certainly confirm that for you if that was not a fact that you already knew. Uh, let me make the line now. And there is the line, y equals six, or if you prefer, y equals zero x plus six. 
All right, the final example that we're going to work on here in this video is this uh, question where we try to give meaning to slope, uh, vertical intercept, and horizontal intercept. Okay, so this is a graph about Tracy's walk, and you can see the graph shows the distance from Tracy's locker in meters and time in seconds. And looking at this graph, if I asked you to describe Tracy's walk, I hope you would say something like this. Because the graph is showing a nice, straight, constant slope, that means that Tracy walked at a nice, constant speed straight to her locker, okay? If the graph did not have a nice, constant, straight uh, slope, that would mean something about Tracy's walk, like maybe she sped up and then slowed down or something like that. But this one is showing that Tracy just had a nice, constant speed um, straight to her locker. So we have to fill in this table now. So it says identify the slope, vertical intercept, and horizontal intercept of the linear relation and interpret their meanings. So the first thing we have to figure out here is the slope. Well, how do we figure out the slope of this graph? It's a nice graph. It doesn't have any dots showing, but I know I can easily pick out some dots right now. Like I see a dot right there. I definitely see a dot right there. And when I think about rise and run, um, I can see that there is a rise of five. And a run of negative 10, right? Direction matters here. So the slope is five over negative 10 and writing that in simplest form that would be negative one half. Now what does the slope mean in this graph? Well I, I guess I've, I've already said it maybe you were listening carefully this refers to Tracy's speed okay how fast Tracy is walking so this is where it makes sense to take that fraction and change it into a decimal and so we would say the meaning of this slope is negative 0.5 meters per second because those are the units, if I scroll back up, those are the units that are being used to measure the distance and the time for Tracy. Okay, And because it's negative, it certainly means that Tracy is walking towards her locker. And this can be a good spot to put that, towards. Okay. The vertical intercept. Well, the vertical intercept here we can see pretty clearly is 5 meters, so I'm going to put that in. And what does it mean? Well, I think this is what? The, the, um, the, like the starting distance for Tracy. And so let me just write that in. Starting, and I'm just going to put dist for distance because I'm running short on room there. And then this might be a little bit weird talking about the horizontal intercept, but it's not that big of a stretch. I mean, we're very comfortable talking about vertical intercept. Horizontal intercept is certainly 10 seconds. And so I'm going to write in that the horizontal intercept is 10 seconds. And of course, what does that mean? That, that just simply means how long. So um, um, the, the, um, I, I guess I'll just put how long it took. Like, how long was Tracy's walk? It's important that you can make meaning out of slope, vertical intercept, and horizontal intercept because it not only helps us understand a graph more completely, but it also helps us understand the equations more completely because here's the last part. We now need to write an equation for this linear relation. Well, we've been writing equations in slope y-intercept form, we're absolutely going to try and make an equation in slope y-intercept form for this graph. Remember, slope y-intercept. Oh, we've got to, we've got both of those things up in this previous table. So the equation would be negative one half x plus five. Yes, you definitely could write this as y equals negative zero point five x plus five. Those would be exactly the same. And as you can see, that when you look at this equation, you should also be able to connect this back to Tracy, even if we hadn't already done this in the table, where we should be able to look at this equation and go, oh, 
Well, if this is an equation that represents Tracy's motion toward her locker, then five must be the distance that she was away from her locker when she started. And negative 0.5 means how fast or her speed. So her speed must be negative 0.5 meters per second. So that's the kind of information that we're hoping you can extract out of an equation when it's written in slope y-intercept form. Okay, well thanks everybody for listening and good luck with your homework.